to ask Henry to begin at the appropriate place. Our first book was the birth of capitalism. Okay, I, I think where I'm going with this, it's going to be a short presentation. Uh, what, what, I, what I'm trying to do here is to sort of give you, like, right now we're in a, uh, a crisis, I think a profound crisis, and clearly uh, the role of finance and the, the issue of financialization is absolutely central to what's going on. So this is an attempt to sort of historicize that and give you some sort of historical sense of the role of finance in, ca uh, in the history of capitalism. That, that's really what my little talk is about. So uh, my book is entitled The Birth of Capitalism, and it really um, uh, deals with uh, Marxist views uh, on the historical transition from uh, feudalism to capitalism, first of all in Europe, but also uh, how this happened in other places as well. Um, so the question is, how does this bear on the present crisis? Well, in the first place, uh, it seems to me that the question of uh, the transition to, from feudalism to capitalism is about a great transition, historical transition from one mode of production to another. And I think we, we are at the beginning of a similar process. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, right now we're dealing with what I regard to be the death agony of the uh, the existing mode of production, um, and um, I mean this this uh, phenomenon uh, in part has been re uh, referred to as late capitalism, a term which is uh, for a while fell out of favor, but I think has a lot of bearing on uh, what is going on at the present time. And I say that because I think that uh, uh, we see uh, 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 today uh, uh, the, the reality of the hyper-centralization of the means of production. We see an extraordinary, on a, on a global uh, basis, the extreme polarization of wealth. We see uh, continuing problems of insufficient demand um, and um, the build-up the build up of tremendous uh, amounts of debt off of which capitalism is essentially living at the present time. I, I think those are some of the characteristics of this uh, late capitalism at the moment. And um, with regard to the latter point, the, the build-up of debt, it seems to me that uh, we see that uh, financial capital is really choking the productive forces, uh, particularly in the advanced capitalist countries, uh, the, the, the power of finance capitalism, financial capitalism, uh, is inhibiting and is a way, has become parasitical to the point where it is, uh, it is uh, uh, choking the productive forces. Now, I, I realize that a statement like that raises the whole question of the relationship uh, between uh, finance capital and productive capital and the issue of surplus value. I'm, I'm leaving that to the side for the purposes of this discussion. And I, uh, I assume that this audience is going to want to discuss that further here today. I'm just concentrating on uh, a historical view, developing a historical view of finance capital. Uh, now, um, the account we have, and I, I still think uh, well, there's been a return to Marx, and Marx's uh, deep theoretical uh, powers uh, uh, allowed him to understand uh, uh, the historical process at an incredibly deep level, which, in my opinion, has never been superseded. Um, in any case, in terms of dealing with the role of uh, finance capital, uh, in terms of its relationship, uh, relationship to the uh, modes of production, Marx, I think, had the view that finance capital was essentially parasitical in the uh, over the feudal mode of production, and certainly it was also parasitical in the early phase, uh, early modern capitalism. Its role was essentially parasitic, uh, and, and indeed it, it uh, w w was repressive when it came to the development of uh, produ productive forces. Um, However, um, of course, if you, if you uh, and clearly I'm, I'm basing myself on uh, Das Kapital and the Grinders and some of Marx's other writings, 
um, he, he makes it clear that, in fact, in terms of the emergence of mature capitalism, the emergence of uh, the, the entry of capital into uh, uh, and transformation of the mode of production, that, in fact, uh, finance capital begins to play a very important and, in fact, creative role. That one of the essential hallmarks of uh, the uh, capitalist takeoff at the end of the 18th, beginning of the 19th century, is the fusion of uh, the productive forces with, uh, with fina uh, financial capital. That they begin to work in tandem to, with, with one another, and uh, indeed, uh, financial capital tends to facilitate the uh, development of industrial capitalism. I'm now talking about the first part of the 19th century. Uh, however, as time uh, goes on, what we find is that uh, the, um, the, the, the finance capital uh, in the course of the 19th century comes to more and more dominate over uh, and, and subordinate um, productive capital or industrial capital to itself. Um, and um, the, 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 a certain contradiction begins to develop. Because on the one hand, finance capital is uh, absolutely essential to the whole uh, workings of uh, an increasingly mature industrial capitalism. And on the other hand, it begins to take possession of uh, industrial capitalism and subordinate it uh, to itself. And here I, I'm, I'm referring to uh, obviously, uh, the development of fi uh, finance capital and the development of monopoly capitalism toward the end of the 19th century. Um, so, I would say that then, <coughs> by that point, the late 19th century, um, a fi a financial capital is both indispensable to the operation of capitalism, and at the same time, it becomes inhibiting uh, of it. Now, uh, this problem has, uh, has only gotten worse over time into the 20th and uh, now uh, we're into the 21st century. And uh, uh, this, what, what came to be called monopoly capitalism, finance capital, capitalism, has now ultimately turned into uh, basically financialized capitalism, where uh, it seems to me that the um, the finance has become really parasitical uh, and uh, dominating over over capitalism to the degree that the productive forces uh, are being choked by by the dominance of this uh, finance capital. So the question is then, uh, uh, or one other factor that I should stress is that while it uh, finance capital comes uh, to occupy this role, at the same time. The banks, in short, and the and the, the whole fact, financial apparatus, in a way, becomes a mechanism, and its credit mechanisms becomes a way in which industrial productive capital becomes increasingly socialized. It, uh, pension funds. There's all, all sorts of apparatus where uh, the, the the power of finance capital manifests itself in the sense that industrial capital uh, becomes dependent on this finance capital. So that um, uh, this is the, it seems to me, the, is the way things have evolved to this moment where you have financialized capital, where it's speculation, debt, leverage, uh, which uh, in a way has uh, led to the uh, uh, a situation of, uh, of serious stagnation, in, uh, especially in the advanced capitalist countries. Now, there are several ways in which uh, uh, several <coughs> exits from this, uh, possible exits from this situation. There is uh, the flight of capital that, given the, uh, uh, the inhibition of the productive aspect of capitalism and the uh, further creation of sufficient sur uh, surplus value, there is a flight of capital uh, elsewhere to areas where uh, the rate of surplus value is uh, the potential rate of surplus value is still high, so you have this flight of capital into third world countries, China and so on. This is uh, one aspect of it. 
Now, another possible uh, exit from this situation, uh, one which I think uh, is uh, uh, seriously possible in the future, is really um, a, a catastrophic crash. A catastrophic crash. Uh, some people are beginning to say this and forecast it, and I, I, I think that this is a, a serious possibility. That this is one way, conceivably, um, the system might uh, seek an issue or an exit from the situation. But I think that my own view is that uh, when I say it's a catastrophic crash, catas catastrophic deflation, I think the not only the economic consequences, but the political and ideological consequences of such an event on a world scale are so great that it's difficult to see how um, you could, uh, by deflating capital this way, simply restart the whole system over again. I mean, the, uh, uh, this would be such a serious event that uh, I think capitalism would be seriously in question. Now, the, the third uh, uh, possible exit, and here I'm coming to an end, is uh, basically I, I'm, I remark the fact that, uh, and this is all said and way better than I could conceivably do, uh, do it in the third volume of, ca of Capital. Uh, this financial capitalism more and more socializes capital. And the, uh, and the third issue, and, it, and Marx himself makes a big point of this, the third issue is, of course, capitalism, which, of course, he himself realizes the key to all of this is the socialization of the banks and the socialization of the financial sector. That is the key in terms of serious steps towards basically creating a, a, a socialist economy. And such an event, in my opinion, um, you know, it's uh, given the, uh, the way things have evolved, uh, we could be taken by surprise. In the same way as we, took, we were taken by, by surprise by the outbreak of the crisis of 2008, we could be again taken by surprise by how quick such a, uh, a situation could arise. Because if, uh, and here I'm ending, the, we saw that uh, at the time of the crisis, that people began to call, uh, call out for the nationalization of the banks. And that was a real possibility at that time. But Obama and the people who were in power, of course, refused to accept that, uh, that possible outcome. And so uh, we're, uh, we're, we're drifting further down the road. And I'll stop at this point.